Hey guys and welcome back. We have seen before how we can give an ID to a view and why it's important to declare an ID to a particular view. This is because an ID is a thing that distinguishes between views and it's used within the layout to draw the relationship, alignment and placement of a view with other views and their parent. We have also had a peek at how we can access the views in our main activity in the last video thanks to their ID and the find view by ID function. In this video, we are going to learn how we can access the views within our code. This is crucial, especially when we want to add functionality to a view when clicked or to change the attributes of a view or how it looks like. Starting from this video and the next two videos, we are learning how we can access views within our code. Going first with the find view by ID function. Find view by ID function generally returns a generic type D that extends the class view, which is the parent of all the views. It finds and returns the view from the layout by depending on two things that you provide. The ID that you pass as an argument to the function and the type of the view that you specify instead of the generic type. Let's now have an example regarding this function. So we are back on our main activity and before that let's create our layout. So what we're going to create is just a simple calculator that calculates the sum of two numbers that user provide. And for this we need to create a layout that has some edit text. So you come here to the palette and you type edit text. And you can see we have a lot of type of a lot of types of the edit text. In fact, all of them are the same. The only difference between them is just an attribute that specify the type of this edit text. So for example, if we have the edit text here that resembles a number, then whenever the user clicks on that number or whenever the user clicks on this edit text, then a keyboard with numbers will pop up instead of the general keyboard that has letters and so on. So it just helps the user what to input when he clicks on the edit text. So you're going to have to edit text. I'm going to copy this over and paste it here. Now what we are going to do is we are going to have a chain of these two edit texts. Chain create vertical or horizontal chain. Then both of them will be attached to the parent, the top of the edit text to the top of the parent. Then some margin to both of them around 32 dp. Now we're going to add a um, hint to the edit text. So for the second one, we're going to have to add second number. For the other one, we're going to have to add the first hint. It's going to be first number. Now, I highly recommend you to change the IDs from the attributes uh, pane instead of just changing it manually. Because if you do, for example, let's just change it to some edit text here. You can see you're going to have an error because we have to change all the views that are constrained to this edit text here and instead of doing this let's go to the attributes pane and change from here so it's very helpful to give a meaningful name to your edit text followed by what type of view is this or meaningful name to your views and followed by what type of view is this so here i'm going to have the first number underscore then just et short for edit text or just type edit text enter and then click refactor you can see it changes both here and here now for the second one second number et enter and click refactor finally you're gonna have some to add the button that is responsible for executing the calculation so center it horizontally or vertically in this case then attach the top of the button to any of the edit text with some margin around 16 dp and for the button here i'm going to give a meaningful name since no views are constrained to this button so i'm safe to change it from here calculate underscore button calculate and finally, the edit text or the text view that displays the result to the bottom of the button, center it horizontally, 
um, a margin and finally let's change the text size to something around 26 SP for the text view here result the V short for text view and just delete the text now let's go back to our main activity so here we're going to create four variables uh, all of these variables are going to be all our, our views within the layout the first one is going to be the first number et first number et is going to equal to find view by id here we specify the type of this view which is edit text in this case then the id r dot id dot the first number et so r we have talked about it before the class response of four resources then the id then the first number et and here we have a warning or an error saying that this uh, id maybe not be within the layout and in this case we are sure that it is within the layout so we are going to suppress this warning by going to more actions suppress missing inflated id now i'm going to duplicate this line three times by pressing ctrl d and here i'm going to name this to second number it's an edit text as well but as a different id now for the button so i'm going to call it button in this case and it's a button so call the add the button class port it and here r.id.calculate button and finally for the text view which is the result tv and here i'm gonna have to add the text view and then it's called result tv so here for the variable names it doesn't matter or whatever you name it uh, make sure always to just give a meaningful name to them because you can use them within your code so here what I want to do is to first get the numbers from the edit text that the user entered and then whenever we click on the button we want to calculate the result and finally display the result in the text view so this all happens whenever we click on the button so here I'm going to call the button and then I'm going to call the set on click listener which is a lambda function and whatever you add within this lambda function here will be executed once you click on the button so just add a functionality to this button and you can see here it passes the view and in this case this view is just a button so if you need to use it within the uh, lambda function you can just access it with the at here and if you want to change the name for example my button and then add the arrow then you can just access it now by my button instead of it now the steps for our calculation is by getting the numbers from the edit text so here i'm just going to call I'm just going to get the numbers from the first number edit text. So first is going to equal to the first number edit text dot text in this case. So text always returns an editable. So you have to convert it to a string. Then you have to convert it to an int variable or an int value so we can perform our calculation. Similarly for the second edit text, I'm going to call this second and then I will access the second number et then the text then convert it to a string and finally to an integer and here i'm going to have a variable called result that takes the first number and adds it to the second number once we are done we are going to display the result in the result tv so here call the result tv dot text and assign it to the result that we have calculated now since the result here is an integer and the text here only accepts string so now we have to convert it to a string now let's run our program to test our code you can see here our two the text and the number so once we add the number for example one two three then here three two one then press calculate the number is calculated to 444 and you can for example try with other numbers as well 10 and 20 the result is obviously 30. so that was it for the first video learning how we can access views and how we can add functionality to views how we can access the attributes 
uh, views within our code. In the next video, as I have said before, we are learning about the view binding, then next about the data binding. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.